So one video I've really wanted to do for a while to try and help out people that are new to the hobby, and in some cases, people that have been doing it for years and may have just been going off bad information, uh, is tackle the subject of a massive cyano or algae outbreak. And when I say massive, I'm talking about, you know, you got cyano all over your rocks and substrate, just covering them sludge, you know, stringy goo and... In terms of algae, you know, massive hair algae that looks like a wig inside your tank, uh, you know, covering the rocks. And what's significant about this is, you know, even when years ago, when I had my first massive outbreak, when I went to go look up for advice and information, I mean, there's just 50 different opinions on what to do and what not to do, often disagreeing with each other. And on the forums I'm on now, I mean, this comes up three or four or five times a day. And the thing that's most important, and let's make sure that we're, you know, to be clear, we're talking about a massive outbreak, is most people always advise to start with testing your parameters. And in my opinion, that is exactly what you do not want to do when you have a massive outbreak. The reason being is, 99% of the time, if you test your parameters during a massive outbreak, your results are likely to be very inaccurate. Why? Well, let's talk about what causes these outbreaks. You know, um, what does cyano and algae eat? First, they feed off of light, okay? So they grow off of light. That's always in their tank. We're always battling that. <clears throat> what usually tips things over, tips the scales, is a nutrient imbalance, whether it be too much or, as they say, an imbalance between nitrate and phosphates. But when we're talking about massive outbreaks, you're usually talking about excess nutrients. And <clears throat> when you have such a massive outbreak, and this stuff is covering your rocks and substrate, when you go to test your parameters... The thing you're testing for is nitrates and phosphates, okay? Well, these massive, you know, sheets and sludge are constantly absorbing those nitrates and phosphates. So the first thing I notice when people post these days, because they know what we're going to ask them is, my parameters are perfect. Why am I still having this massive outbreak? And the answer is, no, your, your parameters actually are not perfect at all. Uh, those nitrates and phosphates are instantly being absorbed by that giant amount of cyano or algae. So your tests are going to look really good. Um, if you could stop that cyano and algae from absorbing them for a moment, well, your test parameters would change real quick. Uh, but no, that's, that's the issue with testing your water. So if you have a massive outbreak of something, you know, don't go to testing. Just go to the fact that there is something really wrong with your tank. And yes, it needs to be fixed. But to even get to that point, really you got to go back to the basics. And that is water changes. Okay, you got to get your water and your tank into a better place. And nothing does that faster or better than water changes. Okay, quality water. Um, I use distilled, but you can use RODI. And, you know, usually if you're in really bad shape, you're going to be doing, you know, 2 30% water changes a week for maybe a week or two and then every week for a while until things start coming around and all that time you need to be manually removing as much as the much of the cyano and algae as possible by pulling it off the rocks scrubbing with a toothbrush and siphoning out you know cyano you can really use uh, vacuums or uh, you know bulb tip um, basters to suck it out and uh <clears throat> I actually use a uh, filter sock and I'll hold it over the tank and I will suction out sludge and I, you know, you'll squirt it into the water, the filter sock and the water comes out, but the cyano doesn't. That's just one way to do it, a little trick I know of. But, you know, first you got to get it to where you're at a manageable level. And once you're at a manageable level, you might be able to start testing because you don't have so much cyano and algae that it's completely soaking up all the nutrients. And then you might start saying, oh, wow, look, my nitrates are really high or my phosphates are out the roof. 
And yeah, there are certain things like GFO or different products um, that can remove that for you and help get rid of it. <clears throat> and uh, so what do you do after that? Well, next you have to tackle the likely causes. Okay, And I do have two very likely causes that I think cause most of people's issues. The first is the most obvious, which is overfeeding. We all want fat, healthy, happy fish, and so it's very tempting to feed a lot, and it's easy to overfeed your fish, okay? And so you really need to make sure you're not overfeeding your fish, and that could be an easy fix if that's the problem. And the second, which is still related, that I think gets a lot of people, that rarely gets brought up, but it's the reason why a lot of people don't go with sand beds anymore and go bare bottom, is your substrate. And sand in particular packs really tight, it's difficult to vacuum, and detrius and nitrates and waste get locked up in that sand bed and it's hard to get them out. And, <clears throat> you know, you really need to be vacuuming that sand every water change and, you know, sifting it out to unlock those nutrients because otherwise, if not, your sand is literally a ticking time bomb waiting to go off. And you can go months to a year with that stuff locked up in there. And then for some reason, and you know, it, it finally just blows. And it's like, what the heck just happened? Um, and I can tell by looking at videos and pictures of some people's tanks. And I can tell they don't vacuum or go through their sand because you, you can see it. You can see the waste in there. It's really important. Uh, otherwise, it's just a problem waiting to happen. Um, one answer is to do what I did with this tank. I got rid of all the sand. I went against my own better judgment to put live sand in there in the first place. Uh, it was before I actually found out about the biological uh, solutions you can buy. And so I put live sand in there, but I have since removed it. Sand also has a lot of silicate, and cyano loves silicate. And so, uh, you know, I got rid of sand because sand is hard to vacuum. It's hard to, to clean. I got rid of it. This tank's doing great because of it. The other thing I advise is do what I did in my Max Nano over here, which is put, you know, use aragonite, the large particle aragonite. It doesn't hold nutrients. It doesn't pack as tight. Um, so it doesn't, I shouldn't say it holds nutrients, but it doesn't hold it as tight. It doesn't pack as tight. It's easier to vacuum. Uh, it's very easy to sift through and, and unlock all the waste out of there. So it's just easier to manage. You still need to clean it out every, you know, water change, which I do. And so, you know, those are real likely causes of nutrient explosions or overloads. So that's something to consider, you know, it might be what you're experiencing. And once you get things manageable, um, these two tanks are both very new tanks. They're still maturing. And so naturally during cycle and, and establishment, you know, you get small cyano and algae outbreaks. And I don't like cyano. It doesn't do much for your cycle. So I used chemically. As you can see... The tanks look great. Um, I had no losses. I have SPS, you know, soft corals, fish, anemones, uh, shrimp. Didn't lose anything. Everything's perfectly happy and doing well. I went by the instructions exactly. So I, you know, I recommend it for small outbreaks. What I don't recommend it for is massive outbreaks of cyano. And let me tell you why. I've had a lot of people tell me that Chemiclean killed their corals or fish. And to be honest with you, most of the time when I see pictures of their tank or videos, I say, Chemiclean didn't clean your fish. I hate to say it, but, you know, your tank killed your fish. Um, when you have those kind of problems and that kind of chaos going on, you know, just because your fish are swimming and breathing doesn't mean they're happy or healthy. Uh, same with corals. Just because they're half open doesn't mean they're happy or healthy. And a lot of times these fish and corals are, you have them just barely at that tipping point getting by. And yeah, maybe doing something, you know, a treatment like Chemiclean where you have to add, you know, a bunch of micro bubbles and stress them out a little more could be the tipping point, sure. But it wouldn't be the Chemiclean that actually killed them. It would be that they were already right there and that just kind of took them over the top, the stress. So, you know, I think, you know, don't use Chemiclean for a massive outbreak or in a situation where your tank isn't really healthy in general. But, you know, I think it's pretty safe in my opinion for tanks that are, you know, pretty healthy or just going through, you know, early maturation or, you know, some nutrients had been locked up and they came out and, you know, not a ton, but just kind of did a small outbreak. I think it's, you know, a good product. Uh, remember that Pristine, 
really impressed with that product. That's new to me as well. Um, Pristine is a bacteria that targets like sludge and excess waste from overfeeding. Works great, I'm really happy with that. But those are the things you wanna consider if you have a massive outbreak, you know. It's yes, something causes, it's likely excess nutrients and figure out why. But either way, you need to get your tank to a spot where you can actually, you know, get things healthy again and then start testing if that's what you wanna do. But if you test during a massive outbreak, just remember, your results are likely not accurate. And with that, any other questions, always feel free to ask. And thanks for watching.